Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get up and running with the latest release of Copilot. We now provide both images for the front end and the back end uh, containers that will be running. So you guys will no longer have to build this front end like you were previously doing, which will make it a little more uh, simplistic on you guys. In terms of the prereqs that are required to run in Copilot, we do still need Docker and Docker Compose installed. And then we, I've also included just some helpful uh, Docker settings that you can implement. The first one being we can set our DNS server. So if you are using domain names for connecting to your Wazoo indexer, Grafana, Greylog, and you have updated your internal DNS server to resolve those host names to their appropriate IPs, then we can specifically tell Docker to use that DNS server. So it'll allow to uh, resolve those host names that, that will be used by Copilot to connect to the various tools. Um, this isn't a requirement. Of course, you can still configure just the straight IP addresses within the Copilot config to like the Wazoo indexer, Greylog, etc. cetera. Um, but I do like to use host names where I can. So uh, this Docker DNS setting will accommodate for that. And then also down below, you'll notice that if you do need to set your MTU, I include that setting as well within the uh, Docker daemon.json file. So and this won't pertain to probably 99% of you, but if you are using a cloud provider like I am, for example, and for example, this cloud provider actually by by default sets the MTU to 1450 and actually doesn't allow us to change that. So if you are deploying Copilot on a VM uh, that you're using a cloud provider to do so, and by default, they're not giving you an MTU of 1500, which is usually always going to be the case, but there are some cloud prov providers that, that specifically set a different value for the MTU. And in my case, with my cloud provider, I'm not actually able to change it. So I need to accommodate for that within my Docker settings um, as well. Nine times out of 10, you guys will probably just only be needing to be using this config block, updating your DNS server and happy days, you're all good. Um, but if you do need to adjust the MTU, because if you run an if config on your box and you see the interface that is assigned to my box here is using an MTU of 1450, I'll need to accommodate that within my Docker uh, daemon.json file. So on my VM here that I'm going to be installing Copilot on, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and run a daemon reload and restart the Docker service. And then once this uh, restarts and comes back to me, we will then be ready to actually uh, install Copilot. So I'm gonna first make a directory here just within the opt uh, folder here. I'm just gonna call it Copilot. And then I'm gonna go ahead and CD into that directory. And then I'm gonna follow the steps that we have down here below. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy our W our wget to get the uh, correct docker compose that yaml file so if i ls this out uh, by default i just have these commented out uh, to have the docker or sorry to have the copilot backend to expose port 5000 uh, this is just for the documentation so if you guys do want to look at the documentation for the api endpoints you can go ahead and uncomment these out um, i always like to do so because if there's any troubleshooting or anything that i need to quickly test I can do so, but for majority of you guys, you guys can probably just leave that uh, commented out. But if you would like to expose that, um, then you can. And then also I need to set my driver options to also use an MTU of 1450. If the MTU setting does not apply to you, you can just leave that commented out. But in my instance, it does actually apply to me. So I'm gonna leave it as such. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Um, then we also need to create the data directory. So I'll, I'll try to run this command, but it's actually not going to work. Um, it should say that, yeah, there is no .env file uh, within this directory. So, so if we scroll up to the top, you'll see within the repository, we have our .env.example. I'll go ahead and open that up and just copy the contents of this guy. Open a new uh, file on my system just called .env. I can leave uh, most of these to default because we can configure these actually within the UI of Copilot itself. But I am going to set my server IP. So if I copy the IP address of my server, my alert forwarding IP, uh, and I'm going to replace my auto with the actual IP address of, of the Copilot server. 
And this will be obvious on why we're doing this in future videos when I go through the how we're doing alerting. And actually, Greylog is going to be calling Copilot when it detects a either a high severity alert or whatever alert definitions we want to define in the future. But there will be uh, more details on that in, in the future. Now that we've got our .env file, I can go ahead and run that Docker Compose up dash D. Uh, to start the Copilot application. So here we're starting the back end and the front end. And again, you guys, and you guys are no longer having to build the front end image uh, like you were previously. We are now providing that. And then lastly, we need to grab the administration credential. So there's this command here that'll quickly allow you to uh, grep out the admin password. So if I run that guy, let me kind of make this figure, uh, we see that the plain text admin password is set to this value here. So now, now with Copilot running, uh, you can also see we've exposed port 5000, which is the documentation. And then we also have 443 exposed, which is what we're going to use to connect to the web UI. So if I go ahead and navigate to HTTPS, um, and here I'm just putting in the, the host name of the VM that I'm running the Copilot application on. And I now get prompted to log in. Creds again are gonna be admin and then, whoops, guess I didn't fully copy that. <laughs> One sec. Paste that plain text password in there and now we are logged into Copilot. And again, as I've shown in other videos, you can start to configure your connectors and actually connect Copilot to all of the open source uh, security tools that we integrate with Copilot. Lastly too, I wanna quickly cover updating. Um, so upgrading, uh, the version of Copilot that you're currently running since and being in kind of the beta stage that we are in, uh, I am pushing updates all the time. So I do highly recommend either once a day or once every few days to go ahead and upgrade Copilot. And to do so, run a Docker Compose down. So this is stop the Copilot application. And then uh, once Docker has stopped both the front end and the back end containers on a Docker Compose pool, so if I run docker compose pull, reach out to these GitHub packages that we have uploaded to here and docker pull the latest images for these two packages, the copilot front end and the copilot uh, back end. Once those images have been pulled, I'm ready to restart the application with just docker compose up dash D again. My admin credentials have already been set, so I don't need to, I don't need to run that command. The, the admin password is not is not going to change. Uh, I can then refresh uh, Copilot, and then we can see that we are on the latest uh, version of Copilot, where we've added some stack provisioning, active response capabilities. Uh, but more details on that in, in the future. But again, I do uh, encourage you guys to run this Docker Compose pool pretty frequently, especially in these early stages of Copilot. And as always, um, feel, feel free to submit any issues for any uh, bugs or problems that you do detect or any feature requests um, that you would like to make when it comes to the future of Copilot. So I appreciate you guys' time and I will see you in the next one.